So I'm going to show you how to install packet beat and send logs into Elasticsearch. So the first thing to do here is to make sure that the dependency is installed, which is libpcap. So I'm going to copy this command into the server that I'm installing it on. And I'm going to start by installing it onto my landscape server. Uh, so when I'm done installing it on the landscape server, what I want to do is actually take all of the installation instructions and steps that I did here and put it into a script in landscape, uh, which I'll show later, and that will automate the install on the remaining three servers, so I don't have to repeat the process on those. So I'll go ahead and start by installing the dependency and it's already installed on this uh, system here. The next step is to download packet beat and install it. So I'm just going to copy this command into the server here. Okay, it's going to download it, install it, okay, and it's finished installing it. So after it's installed, um, the next thing that you'll want to do is uh, make changes to the packet beat config file so that it can connect to Elasticsearch. So all that's done in the output Elasticsearch section. Um, and then also, uh, just for the purposes of running the, the setup command later, it's going to need uh, the information in there to connect to Kibana. So what I'm going to do is go into the packet beat folder, so cd etsy packet beat, and I'm going to open the config file, which is the packet beat YAML. The first thing that I want to do is change the um, the information in here for Kibana and the dashboard setup, because uh, we're going to need to to set those up at least, yeah, I mean, just the first time, and then you know, after that, the, these two Kibana settings can be removed. So I'm going to change this to true, so it loads the dashboards. And in the setup Kibana section, I'm going to uncomment the host and put the IP to the Kibana instance that I have here. Okay, and that's enough for it to connect to Kibana and do the setup. So the next thing is to go to the Elasticsearch output section here. Since I'm sending logs directly from Packet B to Elasticsearch. And the first thing that I want to change is just make sure all of my Elasticsearch uh, hosts are, are listed here. Okay, and the next thing to change is uncomment protocol, make sure HTTPS is enabled so that it, it uses um, TLS. The next thing to configure is the authentication. So you have the choice between using credentials or an API key. So since this is the, the first time that I'm installing packet beat um, for this cluster and the first time that you know, I'm, I'm going to run that setup command. Um, I need to use credentials to to give it, you know, access and permission to do the things that it, it needs to do. But you know, once the the setup command is done, you know, which it only needs to be ran one time, um, then I'm going to come back in here and and change this to an API key. So uh, I'll show you that part later. Okay, so the next part is adding in this SSL section. Okay, so what it needs is the the SHA-256 fingerprint of the CA certificate that Elasticsearch is using. So I'll show you how to get the fingerprint so these are the instructions for getting the CA fingerprint and this is the command that you can run on the Elasticsearch server 
to get the fingerprint. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to go into Elasticsearch 1. And then I'm going to go into the Elasticsearch directory. So CD, Etsy, Elasticsearch. And then I'm also going to go into Certs. So this folder is where all the certificates are. And this is the certificate here that we're getting the fingerprint for. So I'm going to paste in the command there. And I'm going to remove all these these folders that they have in front of it. Since I'm already in, you know, the directory where the cert is located, I can just reference it directly there. So I run the command, and at the top of this output is the SHA-256 fingerprint. So I've already copied this here in my notes. So I'm just going to exit out of the Elasticsearch now. And what I can do is go ahead and copy it into um, the server. But what I want to point out is that you'll notice that the fingerprint here that they have, it's all lowercase, and they remove the semicolons. So you'll need to do that on your fingerprint too. And I've already done that here, so I'm just going to copy this into the config file. Okay, and that should be everything that's needed to do the initial setup of, of Packet Beat in Elasticsearch and Kibana. So I'm going to save, and I'm going to use the Packet Beat setup command that they have, Packet Beat setup E. Okay, and you know it's going to tell us things like, you know, the index setup finished, you know, loading dashboards, what it's doing now. You know, so it's connecting to Elasticsearch and Kavana, and then loading dashboards, and then it's finished. So at this point, um, we can go into Kavana, and we should see all the packet beat stuff there. Yeah, so here's the packet beat data stream that's in here and then if you go to index templates there's a packet beat index template that it loaded it also does the the lifecycle policy so you can see it's already linked to that index you know and I can go in here and make changes to it so I'm gonna change that to like a 14 day retention because these types of logs take up a lot of space um, the other thing that it creates is over here, data views. It creates the packet B data view so that when you go and discover, it's ready to view all of the logs. So now that the, the setup is, is finished, um, before I go in, you know, and start packet beat and everything, um, I want to make some changes to the config file. Um, you know, I want to do API key instead of credentials. And then I also want to remove all the Kibana setup stuff since that's already done. So I'm going to go back into landscape, into the packet beat folder, and then nano packet beat YML. And I'll start by commenting out all of the, the dashboard and the Kibana stuff. So comment that one out and then comment out the Kibana setup section. And then next I'll go to the Elasticsearch output and I'm just going to remove and comment out the, the username and, and password and uncommon API key. So to generate the API key, the instructions for packet beat are, are here. And all of the uh, permissions, commands, everything here is already set up. So um, you can copy this request into Kibana DevTools and that will generate the API key. So I'm going to go into 
dev tools and paste this in here run okay and there is all of the information about the API key that it generated so let me copy this into my notes here okay and ready to put it into the server config file so you'll notice that the format they have here is ID semicolon API key so we need to follow that that format exactly um, when putting the API key in here so I'm going to start by copying the ID paste it there and I'm going to put a semicolon and then I'm going to copy the API key and paste it in there. Okay, and that should be everything that's needed now for it to connect to Elasticsearch and send the logs in. So I'm going to save. And one of the commands that I like doing on packet beat, um, and really all of the beats, is going to be test config. So this will tell us if everything is okay with the config. Um, and the other one is test output. And this one will tell us the, it will test the connection between packet beat and Elasticsearch and it will let us know if there's any issues there, you know, with the authentication or with TLS, anything like that. And as you can see, everything's working here. So what you can do from here before starting it, and it's optional, is you can actually change some of the things here under configure sniffing. Um, but I'm just going to leave everything at the, the defaults. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and start uh, packet beat. So system CTL start packet beat. Okay, and then I also want to enable it to make sure that it's, you know, it's enabled on startup. And I can go ahead and check the, the status. Okay, so, so far everything looks okay there. And that means that we should be seeing some logs in Elasticsearch soon. So I'm going to go and discover packet beat. And you can see that, yeah, right now, 2158. Yeah, so these are the logs coming in now. And agent.hostname is landscape. So that was that landscape server. So now the installation's done, all of the logs, everything is in Elasticsearch. Um, the next thing that I want to do is uh, automate this installation on the remaining three servers. And I can do that in Landscape using a script. So what I'm going to do is go to Landscape, Script, Add Script, and I'm going to call this one Install Packet Beat. And in my notes here, I've already taken some notes of the installation process, the commands that I used. So I'm just going to copy this into uh, the code section here. And the only thing that really I need to modify here is actually where I left this comment. So the logic where we copy the, um, the custom config file you know, into the installation directory before we start packet beat. Because um, really that custom config file, that's all that it needs to to get up and running and start sending logs into Elasticsearch. So I'm going to go into um, Landscape, which is the server where it's working on, and I'm going to copy the config file off of here. So I'm just going to do cat, packet beat, YAML, and just go and start at the the top of this file and copy and I'm gonna put this into my notes here you know and this is the config file we'll use on all of the the installs you know because it already has our 
settings here for Elasticsearch. So I'm going to do File, Save As, and I want to change this to All Files. And this is a YAML file, and I'm just going to call it packetb.yml. Save. And when I go back into Landscape, I'm going to go to the List of Attachments section, and I'm going to upload the packetb YAML. And to use this file in my script, I can reference it using this variable here. Landscape Attachments, all capital letters, just like they have there. So in this space where I copy over the config file, what I'm going to do is cp the copy command. And then I'm going to paste the Landscape Attachments. But I'm going to add the cache sign in front of it since this is a variable. And then to reference the, the file that I uploaded here, I just do a slash in the name of the file, so packetb.yml. And the next part of this copy command is going to be the destination. So it's going to go into Etsy, packet beat. Okay, and what this is going to do is it's going to copy this packet beat, the custom file that I uploaded and put it in the installation directory. And the installation, you know, it's already going to come with its own YAML, but this will overwrite it with the one that, that I want here. So I'm just going to do, you know, a final spell check, make sure packet beat is spelled correctly. Everything's good here. And I just want to point out that I'm doing dash Y on here because I, I want this to be able to run without any user interaction, right? So just have the options, you know, specified here so that it, it doesn't stop the script while while landscape is running it, because landscape's not going to know to do this. Okay, so if everything is good with the script, I'm going to select the user, so I'm going to run it as root, and then save. Okay, and to run it on those computers, what I'm going to do is go to Computers, and I'm going to select all of these three here that I want to install it on. I'm going to go to Scripts, select Install Packet Beat, Next. I'm going to leave all the defaults that I selected here and then do Run. And what it's going to do from here is it will change the status of it, and in the end it will tell you, you know, if it failed, if it was successful. And I'll show you that we can also view the output of the commands that it ran on the server here too. Um, so that's helpful in troubleshooting. So I'll be back when this is finished. Okay, so I'm back, and we can see that the installation was successful and those are the three servers and what you can do is actually click on the status here and you can see the output from running the script on each of those servers uh, so that's good for troubleshooting so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and check Elasticsearch and discover and you know make sure we're getting all of the logs here so what I can do is just click agent hostname and you can see that all four of the servers are on here and everything is working. So that concludes this video.